I, I wanted to be a, a guide ever since I was a kid, but mom and dad said I had to get a real job. So I spent 25 years in the printing graphic arts business, and then at the age of 50, my wife said, well, if, you, if this is what you want to do, then, you know, so I quit the graphic arts business at the age of 50, I started this full time. 32, right on. The thing about fly fishing is you'll never get bored. Okay, there's always something to learn. Essentially what it amounts to is there's fishermen and then there's real fishermen, okay? My neighbor told me, he says, Ronnie, he says, 10% of the fishermen catch 90% of the fish. Okay. So I decided I wanted to be one of those 10% that caught 90% of the fish. Okay, so to do that, you have to invest time in it. Contrary to popular belief, one of the first things you need to decide when beginning fly fishing is what kind of fly line you need because the fly line is what makes the rod bend properly and also dictates the size of flies you'll be able to cast. You actually suit the length of the rod and the weight of the line for the size of fish that you're pursuing and also the diameter of the line or the weight of the fly line helps determine the size of fly that you're going to cast. By adjusting the fly line with lines of differing thicknesses and weight, it gives the angler better control of the line, which in theory improves casting. For most beginners considering the right rod, the nine foot standard fly rod is all you'd ever need, unless you plan to take on a more specialized approach. But even then, certain rods have a bend or action that can be geared to suit the strategy of its caster. If I match the action of the fly rod up with a person's personality, they will learn quicker. It's very important that you understand to have the right kind of fly rod to match how you think about doing things. One thing that can greatly affect your fishing experience is where you choose to set up shop. But once you have your gear in check and boat in the water, it's time to find the right spot. Now that we have a grip on the fly rod basics, it's time to get a hold of the cast. And in fly fishing, the technique becomes all the more important if you ever hope to catch a fish without scaring them off first. You don't want to do like so many fly fishermen do, okay? Fly fishermen come up the river and they make their cast like this and they walk out to the river and, oh, it's so much fun. I got my new waders and I'm getting out and I'm going to go fishing and That's what you don't want to do. So I like to teach about aerializing the fly, and essentially I call that a presentation roll cast. So a presentation roll cast looks like this. Hold the middle of the handle with three fingers and the thumbs up on top of the handle is what it amounts to. So then we want to have what you call line management. So what we're going to do is we're going to retrieve the, the line behind the hand that holds the rod. You wiggle the line out by essentially having the tip lower than the reel. See how I move back and forth and the line goes out as opposed to whipping it? The tip's in the water, there's a lift, and then there's a tilt, and we tilt because the line is away from us. The rod is lifted up. Now, do you see how the tip is back like a catapult from medieval times? See the angle it is? When it's back like this, it can launch the line out. So the first thing we do is we very slowly bring the rod down, okay? And then we rest the elbow against our body. I hold the rod like that. Now watch when I squeeze the little finger, the next one, and that one, watch how the line goes out. It's drop, squeeze. See it launch it? Lift, tilt, slide it back. It drops down, slow, medium, pop. 
Let's go up and see if we can hook up a fish. So what fly fishing really is, is an art and it's a science. The art is the cast and the science is being observing with aquatic insects and matching the hand. There he is. Fish on. <laughs> I don't know how big it is, but there's your first fish. <laughs>